I'm logged into Project Online here. And you can see it's all part of Office 365. I have all of my other Office 365 apps here. Um, as well as you can have Project Online by itself separate from Office 365 if you choose to do so and you haven't moved into Office 365 yet. And right now where I'm at is I'm on the Project Request page. So this is the one place where people can come to submit all the different requests they have, um, whether those are requests for Agile projects or for waterfall projects, um, different ideas they might have, whatever it might be, everything can funnel into this list. Down here, I see all of these different ideas and, then, and project requests and such. I can see what type of projects they're asking for. Are they mobile projects, cloud computing projects, whatever it might be, right? And some other brief information around, you know, estimated benefits, costs, risk, priority, you know, things of that nature. And so the idea is, if you have this one place to collect all these different requests, um, then we can start to look through them, we can rate them, uh, we can get prioritization scores based on some of this information and do some light prioritization here and figure out, okay, we got 100 requests, obviously we can't do 100 of them, but, you know, these 20 or these 30 or whatever it might be look interesting to us. Let's spend a little bit more time on those 20 or 30 doing some more planning and some more analysis and then see if those are things that we should be investing in that are going to give us some good return. So I think of it like a funnel. This is the first part of the funnel here where we take a lot of ideas and requests and such in, and we funnel it down to a smaller group. And the way we do that is simply by coming in here and clicking on this and go, yep, this one looks good. I'm going to create a project from this. But what it does is it creates a proposed project that we can now do some more portfolio analysis on. So at that point, once it's a proposed project, we put in some other information um, like a budget, and we'd put in a high-level resource plan or project schedule, and possibly some strategic alignment information. And from that, then we can do this type of portfolio analysis that we're looking at here. What I'm looking at is the cost analyzer. And so out of those 20 or so different projects that we'd selected you know, from that list of all the different ideas and requests and such, we can say, well, we only have $4 million, right? Um, if we were to spend that $4 million on these projects, which projects should we do? Um, first anyway, that type of a thing. And you can see that based off of the priority or the value that these projects are going to give us comparatively to the cost, it figures out these projects are going to give us the most value. This is my most efficient portfolio. It's going to give me 66% of the value of all of these projects if I were to do them all. Now you can also force projects in and force projects out. So if it's a government compliance project, I have to do it, I can force that in. If it's something that we absolutely know we don't want to do for whatever reason after looking into, you know, the details behind it, we figure out, hey, that's just something we can't take on right now for whatever reason. We don't have the skill set or whatever it might be. Great. You can force things out as well. But then you can say, um, you know, back to management, well, why can't you do all the projects? Well, um, I'm going to need more money. What if I have $5 million? So you can do what-if scenarios. If we have $5 million, we can do a lot more projects, you'll notice. Now we're up to about 87%. So maybe we want to, you know, we're okay with that. We're willing to invest a little bit more to get that extra value and do those extra projects. So really this just helps give visibility um, and some clear, um, you know, objective information into your, all of your different requests that are coming in, both Agile or Waterfall or just, or not, right, whatever it might be. No matter how you're going to execute on these projects, we're bringing that governance in that, that Jim was talking about, right? And being able to select the right work instead of just kind of doing whatever we think today, that kind of thing. <clears throat> From here, then you can also analyze resources. So now that we've figured out, okay, we're willing to spend the $5 million to do all those projects, great. Um, but do we even have the resources to do those projects? So what I can see here now is it automatically took out all the projects I didn't have budget for. It's saying we're not doing those. Don't include that in our resource analysis here. <clears throat> but then it's saying based off of when these projects are set to start and finish, um, you don't actually have the resources to do all those projects, right? I can only do the first set here. Um, and it's saying, more importantly, I should do the first set here. That's where I should put my resources to get more value. But then you can do things like move um, move your different projects around, right? I can update the start date of these and move these around. Notice they're all very staggered. If I spread them out a little bit more and update some of the starts and finishes, then we can probably make more of these projects slip in here um, so that we can do those as well. The other thing we can do is we can hire more resources. So we can say, well, what if we hire eight resources and then recalculate? That 62% of project value that we can get is going to go up because we're going to be able to push some more projects in. Now we can get 80% in, that type of a thing. So 
this whole process here allows me to start out with a large amount of requests, filter it down and do some more detailed analysis as we've done here. And now we know, okay, if we hire eight resources, and it even tells you what types of resources to hire if you go into some of the different requirement details and reports and stuff. Um, then we can do this set of projects. Now let's start planning those and executing on those projects. Um, so I'm going to switch over here to my project view now where I can see, okay, I've approved all these projects. We're ready to start, you know, planning them out in more detail, the schedules and such. Some of these projects might be enterprise projects or otherwise known as waterfall projects. And some of these projects are agile projects. But depending on, you know, and, and that's going to depend on what the type of project is, right? Does it lend itself better to Agile or does it lend itself better to Waterfall? You know, if it's a software development project, maybe it's better to go towards the Agile perspective, right? So then from here, um, I can pick and choose what tool I want to use. For example, for this Fabricam project, I could open this up in the Microsoft project in the browser. In Project Online, there's an online waterfall planning tool that you can use. I could also open it up in Microsoft Project Desktop, and I could build my and publish it back in. Um, but if it's an Agile type of project that lends itself well to that, then what I'm going to do is hit Open in VSTS. <coughs> when I do that, <clears throat> um, it's going to actually open this project up over in VSTS. Um, so that we can come and we can build out our plan here. So I'm going to build out all my different epics, so let's say, and then under those epics, I'm going to build different features. And under those features, I'm putting my user stories, and under that is all my development tasks and bugs and things of that nature that I might need to work on. So I can build out this plan over here. Then I just, you know, all the things that I want to do. Then I'm going to drag and drop those into different iterations. And I can come into my board view as well and I can update then status as we actually start to work on this, right? We've done our planning, we've assigned our tasks, we're starting to work on this, now I'm just dragging and dropping items to active, to resolve, to close, you know, whatever status you might be moving these items into. And as we're doing that, all of that status is flowing on back into Project Online, and we'll take a look at that in just a sec. Um, also though, I might want to be tracking time on these items. So we can get an idea of how much time are we spending to build out certain features or user stories or down to the detailed table if you want. So I can flip to my time view here and I can come in and I can add time onto this and say I worked four hours on this item um, and that information will push back into Project Online as well so that you can kind of roll up time across all of your projects and get actual hours so we can say you know the budget hours versus the actual hours and, and we can also get resource management information out of that right to be able to see are we utilizing our resources properly and, and all types of good things that we'll take a look at. So from there again all that information is pushing back into Project Online <clears throat> and now what I can do is I can click into my project here in Project Online <clears throat> And if I want to get a view of all of that work that's going on and status of it, then I can come in Project Online, and right now I'm looking at this in the online planner, Microsoft Project's online waterfall planner, and I can see a view of this information. This particular view groups by epic, then feature, then story, and then all the detailed tasks below it, that type of a thing. And we can see that information coming back again. If you planned it into an iteration, here's your start and finish dates. Um, if you've estimated work on that particular item, then that estimated work will come back in here. As you put actual work, that flows back in, um, so on and so forth, percent completes, et cetera. And our integration is very smart in the sense that not all of this information is in plain sight over in VC, VSTS. Sometimes we have to do some different calculations and things to kind of map it to the right place and, and bring that information back in. So it's really a, a solution that we've built based off customer feedback and requirements um, that allows you to kind of convert that Agile data into some sort of apples to apples type data so that we can look at it together in views like this, right? Also, let's say I wanted to see this by iteration, you know, what's going on in the current iteration, that type of a thing. I can just change my view here. Now here's iteration one. Here are all of my planned items and the status of those items and work, etc. Iteration two hasn't quite yet been planned. We've started to put things in there. As that's planned, more and more will pop in there. And when we get to three, that'll come in and so on and so forth. So you can hopefully see how that information really flows back into Project Online. And then what that's going to allow you to do, really the value of all of this, um, is different reports and such of that nature. For example, uh, this report here, this is a, a view within Project Online that allows you to look at a specific set of resources. Right now I'm looking at, say, business analysts. 
And I can see here all of my business analysts. Here are the projects they're working on, whether they're agile or waterfall projects, doesn't make a difference, right? I'm pulling all that information in. And I can see that some people like Amy is over allocated within the next few months here. And then other people um, don't have any work at all to work on. So we need to get on some projects that they're kind of hanging around, not doing a lot. <laughs> but you can start to get these views of what people are working on. And if you want more details into that, um, you can flip into an assignments view. And not only can I see which projects they're working on, but I can get a lot more detailed information about Amy is working on this project. And here are the tasks or user stories, backlog items, whatever it might be if they're Agile type projects. Rolling the Agile work and the project work all together so I can see exactly what Amy's working on, how many hours she's spending, completes, et cetera, et cetera, and get some real good visibility into that. Then, if I hop into Power BI real quick here, <clears throat> in Power BI we can build really nice rich dashboards and we have a set of rich dashboards and reports out of the box that you can utilize to get other visibility into this information. Um, this particular one I'm looking at right now is what we call the hybrid portfolio dashboard. Um, and I can see as a whole my portfolio I have some cost goals, meaning we, we're not supposed to spend more than a certain amount of money. <clears throat> and right now we're a little bit under that, so we're looking pretty good. Again, across both Agile and Waterfall projects. From a risk perspective, we're a little bit under on risk, so we're doing good there. From an ROI perspective, um, we're a little bit over, and I missaid that we're actually spending a little too much over here. Um, on, from ROI perspective, though, we're, we're getting extra return for that extra cost, at least, so maybe we're okay with that. You know, we can start to drill in and look into this information. But right next to um, these more traditional PPM types of charts, like bubble charts comparing ROI versus risk or ROI versus cost or whatever it might be, we can see things like sprint turndowns and bug trends if we just want to focus in on the Agile information all within one dashboard right burn downs and things of that nature but then each one of these visualizations you can click on and you can really drill into these reports then if you want to get more information and see what's going on I want to see all of my different projects grouped by portfolio is what we're looking at here <clears throat> and I want to see how those projects are doing I see overall status schedule status work status resource costs issues you know three of my projects are at risk 22 of them are over budget you know these types of metrics and such and then I can come in and I can filter and I can say, okay, I just want to look at projects that are, are having problems. Basically, all my ones where overall health is either red or yellow. Focus in on those projects, see what's going on there. And then I can even drill into then the different information like schedule. I can drill into my cost summaries for these projects. And again, right, these aren't just waterfall projects I'm looking at. It's rolling together the information from both Agile and waterfall projects all together for me into one place. I can, you know, keep tracks of things like risks and issues with these projects and really drill into whatever level of detail that I want. So hopefully from that you can see how we can take all this information um, within Project Online and all that information within VSTS and you can manage the project in either tool, whichever one makes more sense and what's going to give you more value from an execution perspective. But we tie that back to the governance and selection and then we create these different reports and dashboards that give you visibility into all of it together so you don't have to look in two different places or try to create these manual reports. And hopefully you can get a, a lot of value out of that solution, get a better idea of what's going on with your full portfolio, not just one or the other individually in silos.